Hi, I'm John Bailey, gemstone artist and founder of the Faceting Academy. Welcome to my studio and welcome to one of the answer reels for the Faceting Questions contest. It's been really incredible and gratifying and humbling for so many people to participate. We had something like 200 people submitting questions and just about everyone was very kind and very gracious. A lot of people ask questions related to the process that I'm going to teach in this video. But the winner of the contest was the person who asked first. That person was Daryl. And Daryl wrote, Sometimes while perfecting the girdle after reverse stopping, transferring, my gemstones tend to barber pole, either upward or downward, even though I use a cheater. Is there an easy procedure to stop this, or am I doing something terribly wrong? I'm spending a lot of time fighting the girdle for the crown, plus scaring myself crazy. Thanks, Daryl. Uh, P.S. I'd love to get an answer, even if my question isn't picked for the videos. Well, your question was picked, Daryl, and you were the first person to ask, so you are the winner. And this is an important question. Lots of people ask it. It's a perennial uh, problem, f especially for newer faceters, and partly because they're not taught this particular stuff. So before I address the stair-stepping after transferring, I want to mention that some people wrote that they had problems with stair-stepping girdles before they transfer. And the causes for these things are very different. If you just cut your brakes and your mains, you're on the pavilion, and you look, and your girdle facets are stair-stepping with your pavilion facets, there's a problem. There's a machine problem, and it's the, the thing that I'm going to talk about in this video won't fix it. In fact, it's probably not a fix-it-yourself issue. So if that's what you're having, stair-stepping girdle before you transfer, check with the manufacturer of your machine. You're probably going to need to send it back to them. So uh, now about those post-transfer girdle problems. I, to, to me, there's nothing worse than being uncertain of my tools. If I can't trust my tools to cut straight and accurately and do what I tell them to do, then I can't enjoy faceting and I can't push my skill level upward. And I've noticed that that seems to hold true for other people. So if you can relate to this being you know, an, uh, an impediment to trying to enjoy your faceting or to push your skills upward, then uh, you don't want to be wasting your time fiddling around and can't feel good about what you're doing, second guessing things and all that. So stair-stepping girdle after transfer, it's for faceters one of the common causes of either insanity or hair loss. So lucky for me, I got the hair loss. Because this problem can be caused by a bad transfer stand that's what usually gets the blame. So the first thing to do is to take really good care of your transfer stand. Don't drop it. Don't store it with hard objects that can dent the aluminum and then when your dop goes in it is going to be skewed. Don't leave it laying in a box with some rough. Um, keep it very clean. Don't let it get oily because that will attract grit and dirt and then the dop, you put it in and tighten it down, it's going to mash that stuff in, cause all kind of problems. So take really good care of your transfer stand. I like to dop with mine in a vertical position. And one time I got a little tiny drip of super glue that ran down the dop, got into the transfer stand, and for some reason it didn't glue the dop in place. So I took the dop out, and then the next time I went to do a transfer, there was this little thin f clear film where that super glue was and it bumped the other dop out and it made it, it wreaked havoc with that transfer it was awful so just that tiny little thin layer of super glue will be enough to make you crazy so keep your transfer stand in really good shape keep it clean and take good care of it and it won't be the cause of your transfer problems or what seems like transfer problems. S because usually the transfer stand is not the culprit with stair-stepping girdles. It's, it's usually not the transfer. So probably it's not your stand, and probably you're not doing anything terribly wrong. 
What's usually behind stair-stepping girdles is that the cheater hasn't been accurately zeroed on the machine. It's something I call sighting the rifle, and I call it that because it reminds me of sighting a rifle. Uh, when you get a new rifle, you can look down the barrel and you can put on your scope, and it looks like the rifle is pointing at the target and the scope is on the target, and so that's good enough for plinking soup cans off of a fence post at 20 or 50 feet. It's just not good enough for really serious shooting or competition shooting. In the same way, the fastening machine comes with a way of zeroing the cheater so the index gear is aligned in a mechanical way and that's good enough for production cutting it's good enough for smooth rolled girdles it's just not good enough for the kind of cutting that we want to do the basic factory way of lining this up because the index gear is smooth there's no spline so when you put it on the back end of the quill it can turn so we do, like with the Facitron, we take a mechanical device, like the 45 degree adapter, we put it in the quill, we put that against the master lap, hold it in place, and then we tighten up our index gear. Now that's good enough for rolled girdles, but when you tighten that bolt, you're going to turn it a little bit. And there are other issues, like these things aren't necessarily perfect. The one that comes with the Ultra Tech, it looks like a little dumbbell. So for people that have that little dumbbell looking thing for your UltraTech and you wonder what that is, it's for zeroing your index gear mechanically when you put it on. So you put that in, put it on the master lap, you zero the index gear mechanically when you put it on. And that's the same as looking down the rifle barrel and putting your scope on, that's going to really put you in the ballpark. You can hit 10 cans with that, no problem. Want to do competition, you need to take the rifle to the range shoot bullets through it and actually pay attention to where they're hitting. So when you do that uh, with the rifle you're going to shoot bullets. When we do that with a fastening machine we're actually going to cut on a piece of material and you're going to see that in a minute. Uh, using the mechanical uh, device th there can be torque, there can be dust, there can be wear and the transfer stand may be slightly imperfect. If this thing does have a tiny twist of imperfection in it, this sighting the rifle process will actually account for that and your issue with it will disappear. So if we've done this by sighting the rifle properly, the stair-stepping girdle will go away unless there's another problem with the machine, like a misaligned platen. So determining that, the sighting the rifle process, is the first step in troubleshooting everything else anyway. So to sight your rifle, the first thing you need to do is make a sighting in the rifle tool. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to make one of these rifle sighting tools. It's a couple of dots in your transfer stand and you put, I use a little piece of scrap plate glass eighth inch, quarter inch, doesn't matter. A little piece of scrap plate glass in between now. This is just a piece of eighth inch glass stuck between two quarter inch flat dops and I glued this one with super glue so it would be quick and easy. The eighth inch glass is about an inch and a half to two inches long on the long dimension. That gives a lot of run out so your measuring tool can be really accurate. Here's the tool out of the transfer stand. You can see that I've marked one side with a sharpie pen so I can keep track easily of which end of it is in the quill. This is the top of the Facitron head with the index gear removed. This is the inside of the index gear and you can see that it's smooth so there's no splining or teeth or anything to prevent it from rotating against the top end of the quill. You install the index gear this way. Notice that the quill turns independently from the index gear We'll install the index gear retaining bolt and spin it down until it's just snug. Remember to put your cheater at zero and make sure that it's centered. Put firm pressure down on the 45 degree adapter and use an Allen wrench to tighten that retaining bolt. Set the faceting machine for 90 degrees Here's the tool installed and you can notice the mark on the one dop to indicate 
which end is in the quill. This is a different view and you can see that the long edge of the glass isn't flush to the lap. So we need to flush that out. We're going to do that with a 260 grit lap, then swap to a 600 grit lap, and smooth that off a little bit. Now we'll dry that carefully, inspect it, and blacken it with a Sharpie pen so we can see what kind of changes get made. We'll swap ends of the DOP to simulate a transfer. Snug it back into the quill. And we're going to make just a light touch on the lap just to see where our contact gets made. Here's a close-up photograph and in the near end you see just a tiny little corner removed from the piece of glass. That's how far off our transfer was the first time around. To make our best guess, make a cheater change to about here and test that one out. Just a light touch. That's quite a bit closer, but not quite a cigar. Go back and make a cheater change. Best guess. This is like sighting in that rifle. And this time, we're right on. Because the transfer process will actually double any error, and just trust me on this, it will, we want to cut the amount by which we cheated in half. That's our new best guess for our zero point. So, swap the dot to simulate going back to the pavilion. Smooth it off, take off all the cut marks. Blacken it again with the Sharpie marker. Swap it around again to simulate an actual transfer. And this is what it should look like up close when you actually get everything dead on. Just a touch, and that's all. It may take some practice before you can do this this quickly. You may have to do the process a couple of more steps until when you make the transfer, you're dead on. Once I get that, I like to take a small mechanical pencil and mark my cheater dial so that it leaves a mark like this. That way I can sight down the mark and always put the cheater right at the zero before I start a stone and double check it after I make the transfer. This is sighting in the rifle and now that our rifle is sighted in... So, now that you know how to sight in the rifle, I have a basic rule for myself and that is whenever the index gear gets loosened for any reason, I always recite the rifle. And once you've done it a few times, it only takes a few minutes. Everyone I've taught this procedure has become free from the agony of painful stair-stepping girdles. So we don't find any stair-stepping girdles at all around the Fasting Academy. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and I hope it helps you save time and increase your enjoyment of fasting. If you want to learn more, stay tuned to this video channel. Please go down below this video and make some comments down there. Ask some other questions. I may use your question and I may send you a thank you gift in the mail. Also make sure you go to FastingAcademy.com. Sign up there for free newsletters, free updates about new videos and new opportunities to learn. You may also like to come facet with us at the Resident Training Academy where we provide intense training from beginner to advanced levels. The details are on the website at facetingacademy.com. I'll see you there.